Welcome back, everyone. If you've been following this series, you'll remember that we got this 1972 flat windshield Super Beetle that belongs to my friend Robert. This car used to be his grandfather, so it's special to him, and it's actually in very good shape considering the fact that it was sitting in the same place for 30 years uncovered out in the yard. Recently, Robert was involved in a car wreck that totaled out his daily driver. As such, we're attempting to fast track this Super Beetle and trying to put it back together to get it roadworthy as quickly as possible. And, patching and repairing rust is where I come into this project. Well, as I began to work on this Beetle, my friend William contacted me and asked if I could weld up his floor pans too. Well, of course, buddy! But the gotcha is, if I'm gonna help you with yours, then you have to help me with Robert's. So together we removed the body from his 1974 standard Beetle, and with the use of my 350Z tow truck, pulled his pan all the way back to my driveway. The big plan is we're going to slam dunk both of these pans at the same time. I have not ever had two floor pans side by side for a video before, and I don't think anyone else has either. So let's get down to it. William is a total badass. Yeah, this guy. Yeah. This guy. I handed him some goggles and some headphones, but he flat out refused to wear gloves. He just grabbed a handful of axle grease and rubbed it right into his hands before he went to town and tore up those pants. And we made a lot of noise in the process. Thankfully, this part of the process went very quickly. Now up front, I'd like to say that there's no HOA in this neighborhood, which is one of the reasons why I chose to live here. And it is to be known that my neighbors typically make a lot more noise than I do with their dogs barking, loud stereos, noisy junk cars sitting idling for hours, constantly screaming at each other, and their obnoxious kids climbing on everything. My neighbors actually like me quite much because they bring me their broken things when they need help and I'm always available to help them. When I'm out working in the driveway, they often pull out their lawn chairs and just watch. However, today, something was a little different. There you go. Oh, we'll do that, thank you. Oh yeah, thank you, Glenn. Yeah. Bitching about my dirty Z. <laughs> Amazing we have some little crackheads walk down the street and say crazy shit. Oh, she's still cursing walking down the street. What is she cursing about? No, she's pissed off about my car being dirty. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> pissed off about my car being dirty, not the noise. My car being dirty. You better wash that dirty car. Actually, you know what? At this point, the, the paint is 17 years old and it's just not in good shape anymore. So even if I cleaned it, it's still gonna look pretty bad. And if I buff it, it's gonna go right through the clear coat. There's not that much left. <laughs> well, it's also just a crackhead, so you don't take offense to that kind of stuff. <laughs> She's still yelling. <laughs> Lady is nuts. I could hear her all the way down the street still yelling. <laughs> Wash that pretty car. That, that car's been dirty as long as I lived here. <laughs> it makes her mad. <laughs> Some people. I, I thought haters on YouTube or something else. Now I got a neighborhood hater. How about that? It's the first one I ever had. He shook all that dirt out of this floor pan. I'm gonna make him sweep. <laughs> yeah, I think you'll be able to just hit it on a, like a 45 and I think you'll get right through it. Give me the muscles. Well, you about got this thing here. Um, this needs to be cleaned up just a little bit. Just a little bit through here. And um, these little buttons like this, 
don't bother, we'll hit them with a grinder. But this kind of stuff that you can get off, just, just chop it off. But you're almost done here. This is almost done, and I'm sure the neighbors would like to know that we're halfway through this already. <laughs> oh, you still gotta get this up in here too. And then run right through this. Just chop that right off. Then we moved off to Robert's Super Beetle Pan. This pan was much more solid along the tunnel side and required much more attention to cut through. So we tag teamed that puppy and got it torn up too. At least until we ran out of Sawzall blades anyway. We could have probably used my plasma cutter, but I wanted William to experience this method today. He'll be back in the future for more fun as he asked if he could help with other projects coming up. Oh, look at that. Alright. Yeah. And it was about this time that I burned my angle grinder out too. Yeah, bummer. Good thing I keep a couple of these around. That wasn't good. <laughs> I'm afraid! So, I gave the grinder a proper send-off. <laughs> then we flipped these floors oh, over like a fish frying in a pan. pan. It can't handle those kinds of stresses! Because going over a pothole at 60 miles an hour couldn't possibly be harder than that. <laughs> And back to chopping away. I gotta say, the hardest part of installing floor pans is the demolition. All that cleanup of all the old material that has to come off. If you expect to have flat floors that are properly welded into this chassis, in order to do it right, you must have a clean flange for which to weld to. And that's where all of this attention goes into. So William went ahead and took a break for a bit, and I finished cutting off the last floor pan half. I think you got it. I think we're gonna call it a night. It's starting to get dark. The house light came on. Street lights are coming on. But we got missed by that rain. Completely missed by the rain. We just got a little sprinkle. We got a lot done today. This is good. First time removing floor pans. What do you think? I hated it. I <laughs> hated it. But now you're gonna have a nice car. And uh, I started to drop them floor pans in and um, I don't have to cut them. Really? If I cut them, they'll be too small. Yeah, right in. They, they dropped right in. Okay. I mean, just dropped right in. I got that 2x4 there to make up for that piece that you're missing. But that'll allow me to uh, weld them in straight. But they fit right in there. I mean, maybe just to trim a hair off the end, but it dropped right in. For 100 bucks, you can't beat that. Oh, you can't beat it for 100 bucks. Jeez, you can't even buy one for 100 bucks. They look good. I guess they're going to need a good cleaning. That's like some kind of growth of something, some kind of Florida mold. <laughs> yeah, man, we're in a good spot. So I'll get these suckers welded in probably tomorrow uh, afternoon. And then, um, yeah, we're in a good spot right now. This really gets me way ahead of the game. And Robert will be very, very happy that he's going to get his car back a little bit sooner then. Yeah, well, oh, fantastic. All right. Well, I'm going to pick up out here, clean up some stuff, and uh, I'm going to get to welding tomorrow. Later, dude. Later, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Two days later. Well, we are back. There is our floor pan, Super Beetle over here on the left, Standard Beetle over on the right, with their corresponding floor pans behind them there. Those seat tracks are very specific and two year only, 71, 72. This is a 72 Super Beetle, so this one goes to this one. This one, I believe, is a 74, so it does have those seat tracks that have the humps on them. They're a little bit different, and that's just the way they work. But wouldn't it be a little funny if I just decided to um, switch these two floor pans? I bet those would piss off a couple people, wouldn't it? <laughs> but we're not going to do that. <laughs> as fun as it sounds. But we've got these floor pans prepped. In other words, I've got them all cleaned up along the edges, so we should be able to weld them in. As you guys know, and you've seen me do this probably about, oh, I don't know, half a dozen times before I put floor pans in. 
I don't like to punch the holes. I've only done that method once, and using the flux core welder that I have, it has a tendency to blow the holes out when I try to plug weld. So what I do is I actually just run the dots over the edge. And I learned that from a, another local guy that used that method all along himself, and has worked out very, very well for a number of different floor pans, including Eleanor's. So that's what we're gonna do on here today. We've got that flange cleaned up on that edge. Ooh, looks like William didn't do that one. I guess I have to shine that one up a little bit. I'll get in there with the angle grinder and just clean it up real quick before we weld these suckers down. But otherwise, it's just a matter of uh, getting these things fitted. Make sure that they do indeed fit, because I may have to do a little trimming. Um, you know, what's funny is I kind of feel like Donut Media over here because these are expensive floor pans and these were $100 special for the pair off of uh, like Craigslist or something. <laughs> William got an awesome, awesome deal on that. So here you go, Donut Media. Let's build an expensive beetle and let's build a cheap beetle. You know, kind of like their 350Zs that they did over there on Donut Media. Anyway, I'm all, yeah, off topic. But yeah, we're gonna get this thing prepped up and then we're gonna start dropping these pans into place. And I should have these things welded in pretty quickly. I don't see why not. Everything looks like it's gonna come along pretty well today, unless I run into some weird problem. And yes, over there is one more floor pan. I had a YouTube fan of mine stop on by. He was interested in buying it, and he ended up leaving with a different floor pan instead of this one. And uh, we talked about bringing that one to the backyard, and we kind of forgot. So <laughs> I'll have to lug it back there myself, but that's, again, not too big of a deal for a guy like me. Wow, that's incredible. This is a perfect fit. If I cut anything, anything off of this floor pan, it's gonna be too short in any direction. And we're gonna leave this one as it is. Here's hoping that the uh, other side is gonna be exactly the same way. This is a, this is a good fit. Rock and roll. This one appears to need just a little bit of either bending or trimming up here in this corner. Just a little bit. Yeah, these, these fit remarkably. This is very nice. You don't get that lucky that often. <laughs> It's incredible. <laughs> it just fit. This is a metal fab floor pan. Despite William only spending a hundred bucks on them, um, they're pretty good. They're really thin, and I have no idea how old they are. There was a little bit of text printed in Portuguese on the back side of them, so they're probably made in Brazil. But that was also an excellent fit. All right, let's see what we got on this side. I'm suspecting this will probably also just drop right in. This one's gonna fall down because missing a little piece of the chassis and I'm going to fabricate a little piece in for but there's normally a little hook that holds up this corner and, and I will come
come up with a solution for that. That's fantastic. Okay, we're just gonna take a few measurements to make sure that they're the same on both sides. If something is like way out of alignment, like an inch off or something, then I'll address it. If it turns out to just be, you know, like an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, that's within tolerances. The bolt holes should line up. If I cut anything off of these pans, however, they're not gonna fit. I mean, they'll fall out. That's how well these things are sized. This is incredible. Some of the expensive pans that I bought for Eleanor, which is just happened to be up in the garage right there in the bubble, um, they didn't fit this well. I had to do a lot of cutting and trimming. And you remember by that, uh, I think it was a 62, 63, 64 beetle, whatever it was, the last one I did the floor pans in, that one required a lot of trimming. Those pans didn't, didn't fit right at all. The edge here wasn't even cut straight. It kind of had a, a bow out that way. So I had to cut off just a lot of it on the end. And then the ends on either side had to be trimmed down a little bit. But this appears that it's going to fit very, very nicely with no modifications, which I find just, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> but we're gonna start tacking some of these things in then, and uh, we'll see how we look after a couple of measurements. When it comes to the welding, you probably notice they jump around a bit. Typically, I start on the corners and get the floor pan about where I want it to stay, then I tack it in the middle then in between those welds, and so forth, until all the welds are between about one and a half to two inches apart, just like factory. If any of the floor pan begins to bow upwards or doesn't sit flat on a pan flange, I just tap it with a hammer or bring it right down back to flat again. The weld pattern that I've chosen keeps the pan from buckling or warping as you weld it in. It also allows for some flexing when the car finally does go on the street. I do not weld a solid bead here, as it will crack when driven because welds are very hard and the rest of the surrounding sheet metal will give. I also like to weld the pan edge to the tunnel flange. I don't cut or drill holes as often the holes won't align properly with the flange and you'll see the ground right through the holes with no means to weld to. Now while these pans did fit, they were a little bit small and plug welding a bunch of these holes would have just proven to be a headache. I completed welding just as it started to get dark, but you know, I suppose I could have just kept going because welding makes its own light, right? Yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> All right, I got these things done. Both floor pans welded in. You can see the spots that I put on it. And yeah, it does look a little ashy because I have to get in there with a wire brush and clear that up yet. And once I got that taken care of, we're gonna throw a little bit of acid on there, AKA cat piss, AKA phosphoric acid, and transform the bare metal into iron phosphate, which of course doesn't rust. And then we'll put our paint over that. Anyway, I can't find my phosphoric acid tonight. I got one bottle of it left. I actually bought a ton of it on clearance about 10 years ago, and I'm finally starting to run out. But William's floor pan is in. We got Robert's floor pan in, same situation. You can see all the little spots, and they're spaced between an inch and two inches apart. I don't do anything tighter than that because you want a little bit of flex in the floor pan for expansion and contraction for heat, because otherwise if it expands and contracts too much, it's gonna fatigue along the edges and it'll pop the wells. So that's the way Volkswagen did it, so that's the same way I'm going to do it. So again, phosphoric acid, we'll throw a little paint on there, and then we'll seal everything up with a, a tar seam sealer, the same thing that Volkswagen used way back when. Yeah, you can use a more modern product if you want to, but there was nothing wrong with tar. And the funny thing is, is anytime you pull tar off of one of these Volkswagens, there's no rust underneath it, so there's no reason why we need to change out for something else. Anyway, we're in a good position, so when the sun comes up tomorrow, we'll be out here cleaning up this thing and uh, getting it prepared for a little bit of paint in there and some seam sealer. And I only have a couple hours to work in the afternoon, which is why it's getting dark the last couple days that I've been doing this. So from about... Uh, 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock is when I have shade because the sun goes behind the house. So my fair skin and Robert would understand this. Uh, I can't be in the sun. Direct sunlight will absolutely fry me and it'll destroy me and it'll put me down for a couple days. And uh, that's what it did when I was out here with William the other day because I was in some direct sunlight for a little bit and it cooked me and I had to take a day off because I was just, just exhausted. 
Anyway, we got the beetle there. We're patching up a couple of holes in it still. Otherwise, it's just about done. And uh, Robert's looking for a couple of extra pieces. He wants me to weld in here and there, and we'll get that straightened out. But otherwise, we're signing off for now, and we'll be back tomorrow. The next day. Well, the next day, it rained like hell in the morning, so the pans got wet, and so did the welds. But that is of no consequence to us, as we're about to treat the metal for rust anyway. I typically use what we call cat piss, but it really is phosphoric acid and converts any iron oxide, or rust as we know it, to an inner compound known as iron phosphate. And the byproduct is water, which just evaporates off. Iron phosphate will not rust even when submerged in water. And as long as there's no erosion on the iron phosphate layer, the bare steel underneath will not rust either. This stuff is great. It'll also stop rust before it starts on all bare metal too. Something else to note? That while this is a strong acid with a low pH, it has very low reactivity with flesh, which is the reason why it's a flavor additive in things like Coca-Cola. Phosphoric acid is also why Coca-Cola is a very messy, sticky, however moderately effective chemical that can be used for rust removal. But I say, sip your cola with rum and get the proper, more concentrated chemical to treat your metal instead of trying to make a sugary mess all over everything. There are links down below in the video description if you're interested in some of your projects. And if you do purchase at the link, I earn a dollar or something like that. So I appreciate it in advance because you're supporting me. William here is arguing with me on the way this is supposed to be done. He sounds like a YouTuber. He's gonna tell me everything. This is how you do it. <laughs> how many of these have you done before, William? Seven, huh? When did you do seven of them? You haven't even been on this earth that long. <laughs> the other one I welded together for you, did you do that or was that all me? I think it was me, wasn't it? The other floor pan. And the beetle that you're giving me. That was us. I think that was us. We did use... I think I might have done that, actually. Because I think we had that pan, I stood it up, I spray painted the whole thing. I made the pans for it out of uh, refrigerator panels, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Or oven parts. Soak it up, man. Get it nice and wet. Good. There you go. There you go. That's going to make Robert very, very happy. He's going to be so glad. Yes. You guys can see that surface take rust care, Robert. is just disappearing as I speak. Just like magic. See if he can get that too. Yeah, just the dots. Just poke them. Don't need to go overkill because it will start. Um, it'll start deoxidizing the paint, if you will. And then it's going to have uneven colors. <laughs> Is he going to carpet it? I don't know what he's going to do in here. He's probably going to put it back to stock, I m imagine, but it's not for me to say. There you go. Yeah, and all over my driveway. Thanks, William. No problem. He put way too much there, ran right over the edge, it's killing me here. Look at a white spot forming on the driveway. You see Wait, that? You gonna fire right me? Right there. Yeah, you're fired. You're fired, man. Pack That's it. Pack your shit and go. Take your pan with you. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a day off. Threaten him with a day off. Like you work anyway, you just sleep all the time. Say, hey, William, be here at 2. Shows up at 3.30 and he's not ready. Full-time day job. Huh? <laughs> today? I thought you were off today. Yeah. You are. <laughs> You're still crabbing anyway. After my Cortez. Yeah, Cortez. Cortez. Get a little wetter there in the front. I don't want to get it on your driveway. No, well, I mean, a little wetter on the surface, but don't like. Yeah, that's good. You got it. Right. And run over his VIN number real quick, dear. Just a quick doodle doodle. That'll do it. There you go. That's it. Robert is going to be very, very happy with this. Very, very happy. It looks like one application is all we needed because the uh, amount of rusting that was on there was just surface rust from overnight. If it had sat like this for weeks or even months or worse years, it would have been a much different situation. But uh, yeah, the acid, it, it took it off immediately. It even took a little bit of rust off that was sitting there. It's already starting to disappear. Well, good. All right, you're in a great position. Now it's... Uh, a matter of letting it, letting it dry. See all the white spots that show, all the rust showing through it. 
So yeah, that paint on there was uh, was wearing out in the weather. <laughs> yeah, at least they held up the cross, they did. We might have to hose this one off, actually. It looks like mold or something, like cottage cheese forming. You have cheesy floor pans. <laughs> After such a large area being treated with phosphoric acid, I typically just dilute the leftover acid by just giving it a rinse off. And if it were a smaller area, I'd just use a wet rag. William used a bit more acid than I ordinarily would have here, so it was important to use a lot of water to rinse it all off. Then we just washed down the pan to remove any residue or white dust leftovers from the rust conversion that would prevent paint from sticking. If you ever used phosphoric acid before, you'll know what I'm talking about. Once it dries, it leaves a white powdery uh, residue, and you can wipe that off with a wet rag, or if it's heavy enough, you can use a wire brush on it gently, trying not to scratch through that iron phosphate layer that we talked about earlier. But off camera, he repeated the rust treatment anyway for just a few more of the troubled areas, and then we washed it down once William again. William over here washing down his floor pans. Look at a good job he's doing. You're doing a good job there, Mr. William, sir. That is just beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this one. This is Robert's job. This thing's looking great. And for whoever wants to call me out, yes, we did peel off the stickers before we painted it. We're letting everything dry down, and then we're going to um, start putting some paint and some seam sealer on here. We're just about there, but we might run out of daylight before these things get dry. The humidity out here is pretty high. Probably should have started a little earlier. This thing could have sat in the sun, but the sun is setting over there. And oddly, west is that way, but the sun is way the hell over there this season. Mm. There it goes. Nobody knows like the hose. All right, it's time to <laughs> seal up this pan along the areas that we did our welding. We've already acid treated everything. William came over here with some spirits and cleaned off any oily residue or anything that might have been on here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of working the paint into the seams. So that way we have a layer in between. You don't just put seam sealer on the top of it. You actually want the paint to go in between those layers so that way this thing will last as long as possible. And it would be really nice if this thing lived another 50 years. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the other side we're gonna paint the bottom. Now remember, gravity is pulling the paint down. So in order for me to paint up this way, it makes no sense. Instead, I wanna come in from the other side. We're getting here a little bit, the areas that are easy for me to get to that I can see. Come over here. Yeah, we got William over here doing exactly the same thing on his pan. Tell us about how gravity works there, William. I didn't go to school for that. You didn't go to school for gravity? Mm -hmm. So it's not something you might have, you know, acquired as just general knowledge, just, you know, having lived on Earth? Yeah, I thought balloons were. You thought balloons were gravity? Were well, they are magic. <laughs> But technically, I guess balloons do work because of gravity. Because it's about the density of the object being squeezed upwards by the heavier mass. Yeah, okay, that still makes sense. Interesting, different way to look at it. We're kicking around more of your metal pieces you cut off here and threw all over the place here. All right. William's getting that paint in there real good. Now, as you're probably going to notice, he's not going to try to paint upwards into that seam. Because he's smarter than that, right William? You don't know about that? So what he's going to do is he's going to go underneath the tunnel there where that floor pan meets up to the lip like this. And then he's going to put the paint over the top of it so that way the paint gets, again, pulled in by gravity. But what he's doing as he works that paint in there, he's going to go around the other side and he's going to find all the runs coming through and then he's going to brush them away. And that's really all there is to it. Your pans are looking pretty good there, William.
You're right. <laughs> and I'm seeing all that paint's running through just like we said. So it's all coming through. So all those areas in between those two layers of metal are getting paint. That stuff, again, that seam sealer never would have touched. It just would have been a layer on the outside, then you would have had rust popping through. And are we gonna bother washing off this brush there, William? No, one and done, son. One and done. We're gonna junk that thing. Besides, I found it laying out in the yard anyway. Just uh, one of my old brushes I dropped somewhere, so we just rinsed it, let it sit overnight, and now it's ready for paint. <laughs> Good job there working in those seams. Get right in there too if you could. In the bullet holes. Yeah, that little triangle that's there. And watch, it's all dripping down on your uh, dry rotted tire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to ruin them tires now, especially the inside. <laughs> yeah, I love them tires. Look, he made me tow this thing on this tire. Oh, it'll be fine, he said. It'll be fine. He's right, it made it here. <laughs> We'll let him tell you the story about the last time I towed a pan for him. Everything worked out just fine. Well, in the end, you're right. It did work out just fine, but I've never seen you so angry. You were mad. It was frustrating. Yeah, you were really mad. <laughs> but for those of you that don't know the story, William lost a wheel. And I asked him before we left, William, are your lug nuts tight? Oh yeah, they're tight. We get down the road, I'm towing the pan, and we hear and then all of a sudden silence as I'm approaching a red light, and I just see a wheel pass me. <laughs> Goes right through the intersection. What'd you say? It went about a quarter mile, right? It went way down that road. Luckily it never hit a house. It didn't hit a house, it veered right off the road through the intersection, down into incoming traffic, where it veered off to the left through a gas station, missed all the pumps, and then it hit a fence on the other side of the gas station and fell into a little uh, drainage ditch. <laughs> Still, that's a fantastic story. I wish we had that on video. It was exciting. Well, you were fucking pissed. You were excited. You were mad. Yeah. Yeah, and I was laughing about it, because of course nobody got hurt. And it's amazing that the floor pan still balanced itself on three wheels. We weren't dragging any drums. With an engine in it, we would have, but without it, it didn't, didn't seem to matter. This is interesting to get this That's for sure. <laughs> well, over here, this pan is starting to dry where I put that paint in there. It's looking pretty good. So I'm going to set up the sprayer and we're going to spray it. That's not something that I agreed to for taking care of on Robert's pan here. But you know what? We're going to do that anyway because I think it's going to make Robert very, very happy. And that's the goal today. Make Robert happy. Well, we got the first coat of paint on here. <laughs> um, it's only like, a, I don't know, 20% at max coat of paint. I, I did not get what I wanted to, but typically you don't put a very thick first coat on anyway. Did the same thing for William. The reason why the coat is so incredibly thin and why I had so much trouble with it and that you didn't get to see it in the video is because the damn spray gun sucks. I went through two of them. One of them just didn't want to work right at all. Then I lost a little piece to it when I took it apart. And then I tried a second one that belonged to my dad that's about as old as I am and it didn't want to work either. It made no friggin' sense at all. Yes, the paint was thinned. Yes, my pressures were set correctly. And just for whatever reason, it did not want to fucking work. So I very haphazardly just sprayed them as much as I could and uh, you can actually see through the paint. <laughs> it's so thin. <laughs> all the little scratches and things in the pan are all showing right through. But anyway, first coat, that's what matters. Okay, we're at that point now. Now we're ready to start doing some seam sealer all through here once this dries. And because it's so thin, it's probably gonna dry very, very quickly, especially in this Florida heat. It's just disgusting out here. And then William is gonna do the seam sealing, right, buddy? Sure. Got paint all over you, man. <laughs> well, there you are. Okay, we're gonna let you dry. This one is probably dry enough you can start putting it on there. Yeah, I think you'll be okay. There's some gloves in there. Just just start, you know, squishing it in. Don't need anything too fancy. And for those of you watching the video, no, you don't need to buy expensive seam sealers to do this. It's just uh, done with tar, just like Volkswagen did way back when. Stuff works best, and it's also the cheapest. You like cheap, right? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> and there it is. These things look good. And we painted them just flat black this time. I mean, I've done gloss before, but for some reason they always just turn flat anyway. They get chalky. 
So, I, I think we're what pretty you good there. There's some tar. Some tar. Some dino juice. Some seam sealing. Dino juice, look at that. From the Volkswagens from the Depression era, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. So he's gonna seal up that seam, top Coat. and bottom, both sides. He's just gonna pack that stuff right in there, and it's, it's all there is to this. I mean, just pack and move on, pack and move on, pack and move on. Once that's done, then we'll put a couple more coats of paint on this thing, and uh, this floor pan's finished. I'm excited. You excited? What's your definition of excited? Um, ready to say yay? I'm ready to have this done, yeah. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Ready yeah. to drive it? You gonna drive your floor pan around without the body on it first? If you'll pull me. <laughs> if I'll pull you? <laughs> Is that some kind of a gay advance or what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we now have officially three coats of paint on this chassis. We're starting to lose our daylight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna throw these pans down and we're gonna try to get one more top coat. Cause there's gonna be some spots that I didn't get to see, the stuff that's facing down that's hard for me to, uh, to get with the sprayer. So once it's laying down, it'll be real obvious. And I'll hit them tonight. And if for some reason they don't look like they're done, when I wake up in the morning, then I'll just go ahead and uh, hit it with some more paint. But uh, I think we're good. What do you think, William? Is it victory time? Where's my beer? You guy. I was gonna open it with one hand, because I'm that kind of a guy, I can do that. Oh, yeah, you gotta like that? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it though, here. To floor pans. But yeah, hmm. Hmm. That was the right answer, put them in the freezer. Ho oh. ho. Did you put two more in the freezer? No. Yeah, you should've. <laughs> Over here in a good spot. Really good spot. I'm very happy. I think William is overjoyed. Oh man, I'm ecstatic. He's ecstatic and somebody just fired up his lawnmower and here it is, 8 o'clock at night and it's about to get dark. There we go. Everything's green now. Looks like a Paris Hilton video. Actually, that went down gently, more gently than the other one did. All right, here comes the fun part. Here comes the fun part, boys and girls. This is the part that makes William yell. William says, don't do that. You're gonna blow my car up. There's gonna be explosions and shit. <laughs> hey, you don't have a U-brake on here, right? Just got a U-brake. It doesn't work though, so I'm gonna need this to stop the car. So I'm gonna leave that board right here. And he says, do it gently. Do it gently, don't hurt my car. Real gently, here it goes. Real gently for William. Yeah, Is that better? Yeah, Is that better, you didn't cry? Yeah. Good? Didn't hurt your feelings none? <laughs> All right. And then I'm gonna have to do my um, jump test. Every time I put in floor pans, I stand on them and jump up and down like it's a giant roller skate. Or skateboard, I should say. Yeah, that. See? And that's why we knocked it down. Because I always miss a spot. Did a half -ass job. Yep. See, I kind of missed a little bit there, too. Some chips that need to be covered. Jeez. So we'll hit this real quick. One more coat. Both these pans. And then we'll let them sit overnight to dry. They should be real nice in the, in the morning. Unless it rains. See, I'm a little worried about that, actually. I, I painted pans once and it rained on them. Clear. Well, what happened is the rain went under the paint and it blistered. It was like bags of, of water. It was the weirdest thing I had ever seen in my life. It just somehow managed to get under the paint. And it was just like, there was this huge bag sitting here and I'm pushing on it and I poke a hole in it and tear it. So anyway, I had to let them completely dry and then I had to repaint them. It was fucking awful. <laughs> I looked at the weather, it was supposed to be dry, but you never know. Yep, Florida and everything. Geez, I can't see a damn thing. I don't know if I want to paint these tonight. I do. I'll do it in the morning. You're not leaving tonight anyway. Ooh. This infrared stuff gives that sky a weird freaking glow. Look at that. Isn't that weird? Wow. Come on, Makes man. your shirt look blue, too. It's my least favorite color. Blue? You're welcome. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're wrapping it up for one more night. There it is. Again, we're making noise and the damn dog's barking. 
the next day. All right, well, there we are the next morning. And these pans are looking fantastic. Got pine needles and stuff laying on them. But, yeah, it looks like I had a, some runs. Boo-hoo, everything will be just fine in the greater scheme of things because it's gonna put carpet on it. But that's what I get for painting in the dark. I got runs, looks like I had some runs over here too on the very, very edge. You know, don't paint in the dark, guys, bad idea. And this was uh, actually in the paintwork on the original um, pan, or I should say, it is the pan's original paintwork that we painted over. It wasn't peeling or anything, but uh, had all kinds of lines in it of its own. I suppose we could have stripped it, but it wasn't trying to release on its own. So we just kind of went with it. But these pans are looking pretty good. What I'm going to do is now that they're laying down, I'm going to paint upwards this way. Because if you look in here through the tunnel, you can see there's some spots that I missed that are just a little inadequate. Right along this lip, for example, I can get in there a little bit better. So those are some of the things that we're going to do. Otherwise, everything looks great. 11 minutes later. All right, I went over them about three more times. They're still looking a little wet, but they are drying fast in the sunlight. Just happens to be a little shadier right here, so it's still a little wet. But William, on the other hand, is a sitting in direct sunlight. And this sucker is drying quick. But these things came out really nice. These things came out really nice. Well, like every other floor pan I've ever done. <laughs> They're good. In fact, one of the cars I just did a floor pan on just got sold and the new owner is ecstatic about it. It's got great floors in it. Yeah, it's because the duck man did it. I guess that was one of the sales pitches on it when they sold it. <laughs> All right, well, I think we're at a stopping point. We're waiting for William to come on back and then we're going to do brake lines, but I think brake lines are going to be a separate video. Nonetheless, we're signing off and uh, Licky likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck the dingle bellies. So you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll see you guys next time.